Hi guys, welcome to today's video. If you're new to my channel, my name is Talia, and today we're going to be talking about my 6th gen iPad and how I use it to take notes as a paperless student. So here I have open a page of notes from my chemistry class that I'm taking this semester. I'm currently taking prerequisites for nursing school, and these are the notes that I started taking on my iPad. It has seriously been a life changer, you guys, to have this iPad because I don't have to carry a bunch of notebooks around for school and I don't have to carry a bunch of textbooks around either because all of my textbooks are in the iPad and it's just made my life so much better and easier as a student. So you might have a couple of questions about how I do this. You're probably wondering what kind of app do you use for taking notes? How do you get your textbooks synced into the iPad? And what kind of pencil is best to use with the iPad? Don't worry, I'm here to show you guys how you can do all of that stuff and more to become a paperless student. So the first thing that I like to do before I start any course is to get my textbook into the iPad. The way I go about doing this is opening up Google Drive, which I'll show you how to do right now. So I just go into my drive right here and then I'll look for the textbook that I want. I have a bunch of files, but this is the one that I want. So I click on these three dots and then I go to open in. Now you have two options. You can copy it to, I, to the Books app or you can copy to GoodNotes. I like using copy to books because when you do it this way, you can use the split screen option, which I'll show you in a minute. And here's our textbook. So you have your entire textbook for the semester and you can carry your iPad around and not have to worry about carrying around heavy textbooks or making your back hurt or anything like that with carrying it in your book bag. So here's my library of textbooks that I have and let's say that I'm getting ready to take notes for chemistry. I'll open up my textbook and then I'll swipe or rather slide up here on the bottom and this is the Good Notes app right here. This is what I used to take my notes on. So I'll drag it over here until I'm, I end up with the split screen option. Let it go. And now I can see the textbook while I'm taking my notes, which makes it super helpful because I don't have to flip back and forth between the apps and I can just take notes right from here, like as if I had an actual notebook open with a paper textbook. So the first thing I like to do before anything is make a header for my notes and this one was made in an application called over and I can show you guys how an in-depth look into how I take my notes in a separate video uh, just let me know in the comments if that's something that you'd be interested in seeing my favorite things that you can do with good notes is the shape tool and this makes it really easy to make your notes stand out or if there's something important that you want to highlight without actually using the highlighter, you can make it stand out by pressing the pencil button. And I like to just make the shapes in a different color if I'm trying to make something stand out. I select this tool right here. This is the shapes tool. And then I'll go and just make like a rectangle or a box around something or you could even do a circle like that. And then obviously you also have the option to choose a highlighter. So you can do that by going here to this button. Next to the pencil icon is the highlighter option. And then you just select, select the highlighter color that you want. And let's say I just wanted to highlight mine in a brighter red. I could go like this. And also, since I have the shapes tool selected, it makes the highlight go super straight, which is really nice for keeping your notes neat. Because if I don't do that, it looks more like this, which is kind of like a little bit uglier. So I always like to have that shapes tool selected when I highlight my notes. So here I have a page open from my notebook that is a lot more recent. And these notes are just way more simple looking compared to the ones that I was making when I first had the iPad because I learned how to use the shapes tool a lot better and you get more comfortable writing with the Apple Pencil. Something else I want to mention about the Apple Pencil is that it is compatible with this 6th gen iPad model. So you don't really even need the iPad Pro because you can basically do all the same things that you can do with the iPad Pro. It's just on a smaller screen and you save yourself a lot of So for this page, I want to make a header. And let's say I just want to do something really quick. I can go and 
kind of zoom in a bit here to get a little bit more comfortable. Obviously, the closer that you are, the more comfortable you are when you're taking the notes. So what I like to do is I can also press on this tool and it's kind of like a zoom in feature. So you basically drag the box over the area that you want to write on and it doesn't have to be perfectly centered because I'm going to show you how you can also move around any text that you put on the page. So I have the color selected that I want already and what you can do is actually go here Whoops. So you'll just go right here with the color that you've selected. And I'm just going to write chapter 15 because that's the chapter that we're on. We have our hands tied. They treat us like we're So once you're happy with it, what you can do is select this lasso tool, wrap around it, then you're going to click on it once and you can click resize and this will make the text bigger or smaller. So let's say I just want to do it like that. That's kind of obnoxious, but just so you guys can see how big or small you can make the text. So now, and as you can see with the lasso tool, you can also move around the text that you've selected anywhere on the screen that you want. For example, like this C is a little bit too far out for some reason. So I'll just drag that. For example, this C is a little bit too far out for some reason, so I'll just nudge that a little bit closer. And there's my title. And you can also use the highlighter tool to go over the text. And this just kind of gives it a nicer look so that it stands out and makes your notes even prettier. And just to give you guys a look at what else you can do, these are just some more diagrams and uh, screenshots that I took from my textbook and I inserted it right into my notes. And then I also always make this line down the center to separate my notes into columns. It keeps things a lot neater. And you can even go in, I do this sometimes, I'll just erase the column divider. And this makes it look like I was able to write neatly the entire time and write out my notes and columns even though I can't do that. But it makes it look so much straighter when you add that line down the middle. So that's a good little tip too. One of the best things about having this iPad is being able to use it for a class like chemistry because you can draw things out like this. And that's just something that you can't really do when you're typing your notes on a computer, for example. Or you can, but it just takes a lot longer. And having the iPad with the Apple Pencil just makes it so much easier to draw things out when you need to quickly or copy something down that your professor wrote on the board. Something else that I wanted to show you is that you can also take a picture, for example, of something that your professor wrote on the board and then you can insert it directly into your notebook, which is what I did here. And I just went over anything that he wrote with my own pencil that I selected here and it made my notes so much neater and easier and it took way less time to take that picture in class than it would have if I were to copy the notes while he was speaking. So by doing that, I'm just able to focus more on the lecture and less on what I'm writing. So the next thing that I want to talk to you about is paper templates. This is by far one of my favorite features in GoodNotes because you can select different papers depending on the tasks that you're doing. If you want to add a new page to your notebook, you're going to click on this plus button right here, then add page below. From here, you'll see that you have a bunch of options, which is really overwhelming. So I always just pick standard US letter and I have 
different paper options here. So I like to click on medium and quad ruled paper if I'm taking textbook notes. Um, and then if I'm doing something like, and then if I'm doing a practice problem from the textbook where I'll be doing a bunch of practice problems, I'll use plain paper because it just comes out so much it comes out so much neater and I can write so much more on the page when I just select the plain paper. I feel like lined paper is really constricting when you're trying to do like all of these practice problems. And then finally, if I'm taking notes in class, I always like to select the Cornell notes paper. And you can also change your paper template by going to more options, change paper template. And then this is under the essentials paper. You scroll down and there's your Cornell paper. I love using Cornell notes paper for my class notes because you can divide your notes into different sections, making them a lot more organized when you're jotting down a bunch of things in a short amount of time. So on this side, I'll write down what topics we're talking about in class. Here, I'll talk about things that the professor is showing us on the board, examples, definitions that he's spewing out. And then down here, I'll, t I'll write down things that are really important, such as equations or something that I have a question about to ask my professor about later in class. So something that I understand sometimes is that it's really hard to give up paper completely because you just like to see things printed out and have them all in one place and I think having a backup binder of your notes is great in case something happens to your notes on the cloud storage or whatever you choose to sync your notes to. So I like to print mine out and put them in a binder after we're done with the chapter or right before I'm ready to review for an exam. So here's my binder. and. These are all of the notes I've printed out so far. Uh, this is the cover to my notebook from the iPad. You can design all kinds of covers and even purchase cover templates on Etsy, which is pretty cool. And then I'll just have different chapters in this notebook printed out already that I can refer back to. Having your notes printed out like this just helps you be so much more organized because you can just flip through your binder and then if there's anything that you felt like you missed when you were taking notes on the iPad, you can just write it down on with a pen or pencil right here in the corner and make a note of it if you have to ask your professor a question about something. So that's also something to keep in mind. Something else I want to mention is that this page looks a little bit funky because I chose the wrong paper template. I think I chose a mobile paper template, but if you just choose the standard writing paper template and make all of your notes with that template, then when you go to print out your notes, they'll all look the same and look cohesive and it won't look weird like this one does. So that's just something to keep in mind if you're planning on printing your notes and putting them into a binder. Something I get asked about a lot as a paperless student is if I still carry a paper planner with me and the answer is no. I use a digital planner also and this is one that I've been using this year and it has been a game changer as well because I used to carry my planner around with me and then pages would tear out and it would just be a disorganized mess like post-its everywhere so I did not want that and this just keeps everything looking so much neater. So I'll go to a page that I did before. This was my uh, planner from January. These are the pages that I used and this is the calendar that I use. So you can just like annotate it and put um, different stickers into it and things like that, which is really cool. And then these are just some of my daily agendas and things that I had going on for the week. And then I would also make 
notes in the planner as well, like as if it was a notebook. So it just made it really easy to keep everything organized. Now, this isn't to say that I don't like paper planners because I do. I love them. I'll spend so much time when I go to TJ Maxx or Marshalls just looking at the planners. But honestly, as a student, I just don't have time to be like fumbling around with papers all over the place and everything like that. So maybe I'll go back to using a paper planner uh, once I'm working or something like that. But as a student for now, I think this is the best system for me. And this is why I love having the iPad because it just makes it so convenient to have these planners and everything in one place. So if you're interested in learning more about how to use digital planners, I plan on making a video all about that and going in depth into how I use mine. And I'll actually be selling digital planners of my own that I'm making later on this year. So once I do, I'll definitely post the link in the description and you guys will be the first to know. But here's a little sneak peek of something I'm working on. This is a planner that I'm doing right now. And here's a little sneak peek at like a blank page. So there will definitely be more to that and more information on that. But this is just a little intro into how you can go about having your digital planner, textbooks, notes, all in one place using GoodNotes. And there you guys have it. Those are my reasons why I chose to become a paperless student this year and why it's worked out for me. But I want to hear from you. My question for you is, are you team iPad or team paper? And if you're team paper, why has it worked for you so far and do you think that you'll ever think about becoming paperless? Don't forget to like this video, comment, and subscribe, and I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. Bye!